Last time on the Lombok Tour. I made it to the highest point of my trip. What a view. Before my brakes failed on a crazy descent. Whoa, 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 whoa. Thanks to the help of some good Samaritans. I have working brakes again, that's fucking brilliant. I'm now waking up in paradise, where I'll explore some hidden corners of the island before continuing my journey west to Kuta. These are the hard miles now. These are the ones where you find out what you're made of and have to dig really deep. Under a bright, full moon, fishermen's boats potter around the island, reeling in their catch during the dead of night. And then, a sudden splash of light and colour. A new day in Lombok. Having worked through the night, local fishermen and their wives head to the mainland with boats full of fish, ready to sell in the markets. Out of all the places I've woken up in life, this one may well be the most special. Good morning. Welcome back to the island. It's day 23. I've been uh, rationing off the last of my biscuits. Pakila just, just didn't come back. Anyway, it's not the worst place to be. You know what? I may have to, I may have to treat myself a quick little dip. Why not? much better than this. <laughs> Got my own little island, Mount Rinjani over there. What a way to start your day. It's so calm and peaceful. Fresh and clean, morning bath. <sighs> Mate, this place, it's incredible. Really enjoyed my stay here. Short and sweet, slept pretty well. Um, did have company, wasn't fish with legs. It was uh, a rat or several rats and an owl. And obviously the owl wasn't doing a very good job because the rat was just, just, Oh God, that was a weird, if you just clipped that. <laughs> it was just like gnawing at everything. Apart from that, slept like a log. Um, yeah, I mean, look at this, I've, I'm efficient today. Already packed away the tent. Everything's gone, well, nearly. Uh, I've just got to wait for Pak Ila to show up. While I waited for Pakila, 
I decided to do a little bit more exploring of the island. God, it's a proper little explorer's island, this. <laughs> All these little nooks and crannies and tiny little pathways. I didn't get to explore this part yesterday. And over there, I don't know if you can see right in the distance, that is Tanjung Ringit. That's the very end of the island, southeast corner. That's where I'm going to be heading. I hope these fishermen don't see me. They definitely see me dressed like this. Probably wondering what on earth's going on. Just like everyone else who's seen me on this trip so far. As I made my way around looking like a lunatic, the island was slowly coming to life. It was special to see this fishing community up close, you know, people whose whole lives revolved around the rising and lowering of the tides. Meanwhile, my life currently revolved around cycling. Don't want to jinx it, but my legs feel good. I feel pretty good, to be honest. I'm, uh, I'm ready for the next, the next phase of this. I'm hoping uh, by the time I've done this lap, Pakila has uh, arrived. Imagine, <laughs> imagine if he's just forgotten. He just wakes up three days later. He's like, oh, I'm supposed to pick that guy up. Fuck. <laughs> I'm just here living off rat, grilled rat. Fortunately, before things got too bear grills, my captain arrived. Look who's just showed up. Pak Ila has come to save the day. Salam up, Paggy. <laughs> All right. Guess that's it then. Farewell, Gilly Bembek. Delightful stay. Uh, onwards we go. Instead of grilled rat, I was now chowing down on delicious, fresh nasi bunkus as we headed back to the mainland. We're back on the mainland, Tanjung Loire. Now, the original plan was that I was gonna start cycling from here, grab my bike and go all the way to Tanjung Ringit and then to Kusa. But that would have been one hell of a day. Uh, and Pakila came up with a better idea. Rather than cycle all the way from Tanjung Loire, we were now gonna pick up my bike and then sail back east over to Pink Beach. And this was a far more exciting adventure and it was gonna save me hours of cycling under the searing heat of the sun. So I was all for it. In hindsight, if I had uh, told Pakila my plans sooner, we could have just brought the bike yesterday. But it's only halfway crossing to Gilly Membek last night that I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to Pink Beach tomorrow. And he's like, I can drive you. It's, sa it's gonna save me like three or four hours of cycling and I would have had to double back a long way. So this just makes so much more sense. I'm excited to get out of there because I've heard it's quite remote and it's, it's a long way to reach if you're driving from anywhere on the island. It's just far out. So this will be this will be a cool experience to finally to finally see it. And as we made our way east, this new part of Lombok revealed itself to me for the first time, and it was mesmerising. This is lovely. First impressions, it's not very pink, is it? But it is lovely. It's very nice. I, I, I would quite happily stay here all day, actually. But this isn't a video about lounging by the beach and chilling out. This is, this bike's not gonna ride itself, unfortunately. Before I got too attached to that idea of lounging around on the beach all day, I uh, prepped my gear, drank my coffee, and said my goodbyes. Quick coffee with the boys, and then I suppose I should be on my way. 
See you. Thanks, Pac. What a nice guy. Truly lovely guy. He sorted me out. That was a great, great little adventure in itself. Okay. And now the hard work begins. It begins with a hill because of course it does. Who wrote this script? Ah, oh, God. Anyway, the plan today is very simple. I cycle just round the corner to the end of the island, Tanjung Ringit, Rangit, something like that. And then I cycle all the way to Kuta. I say cycling, but it's not looking great right now, is it? Fortunately, that hill flattens out and at the top, I found myself in the shadow of a giant. This was Tanjung Ringit, the very farthest southeast corner of Lombok. Like, I could ride no further. The lighthouse towered majestically over the strait, guiding ships between Lombok and Sumbawa, which I could see on the other side. This is, I guess this is Lombok's equivalent of Land's End. That's the Sumbawa Strait. Sumbawa over there. Wow. Behind me, Rinjani. What an amazing spot. It's so far out here, there's like, there's just nothing here. It was pretty clear that not too many people came out this way, you know, that there were still these old relics from forgotten yesteryears that stood guard. They're a reminder of the history of Lombok. This has been here since the Japanese occupied Lombok. They took over Indonesia in World War II. Quite incredible that this thing is still here. And the idea was that this was sat here on the headland, looking out over the strait between Lombok and Sumbawa. I don't know whether it was ever, ever fired, but I don't think it works anymore. <laughs> There's a lot of rust going on. Quite amazing that it's just stood here to this day. Checkpoint. Tick. Let's get to Kuta. Let's get to Kuta right after I've had my second breakfast. Mate, look at this. Okay, you didn't give me one breakfast, you gave me two. Absolute legend. Necessary fuel. Nothing beats a good nasty bunkus like that. Rice, chicken, beans, I don't know. Fuck knows. It's great. Every time it tastes so good. As I'm sure all the monkeys around me would like to know. Paranoid. Turns out I had good reason to be paranoid. Hey! Don't you dare. Fucking hell, that was a terrible idea. Just decided to give the last of my rice to one of the monkeys and then it turns out there's about a million of them. This is why you don't feed the monkeys. Absolutely terrifying. Leaving the lighthouse behind, I finally hit the road. That was far too much monkeying around for my liking. Let's get out of here. Next stop, Kuta. This afternoon, I would cycle four or five hours along the south coast to Kuta. As soon as I set off, it was really noticeable just how different this part of Lombok was. This is a really bleak little forgotten corner of the island. It doesn't even feel like I'm in Lombok right now. There's nothing here. It's just seemingly dead trees and scorched barren wasteland. It's really odd. I literally feel like I'm on a different island. The heat was intense here. The trees, they were all dead. The land was this crisp brown, like a like a wholemeal loaf that you don't really want. As I whirred along, I'd catch a glimpse of the odd ramshackle village. 
herd of buffalo or a flock of birds up above. It felt like one of the most desolate places I've ever been to. Some of you eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed a lovely change of attire for today. Suits me? Yeah, thank you. I thought so too. It's one of my favourite colours. It is a size too small. Um, I went for large, but it's an Asian large. And I'm more of a UK chunky European size. So I put it on and it's a, li it's a little bit tight. But I couldn't be bothered sending it back and getting the next size off, so there we are. It's not like I've been making good fashion choices on this trip anyway. The only fashion choices that would matter today was how to keep cool. The sun was beating down relentlessly. Like I cannot stress enough how, how hot and sweaty it was. I needed shade. Tell you what, it's like, it's like the Australian outback. That's what it feels like. Very hot and barren. As you can see, tree comes to my rescue again. Beautiful bit of shade here. It's about the only shade I could find on this stretch of road. I could make this whole film just about trees. Literally, the more we plant, the better. Just me and my friends, Harry Bow and the tree. You want some? No? Do you think I'm going a bit crazy? It's the fourth day. Maybe I'm losing it slightly. He says, while stuffing his face, talking to a tree. Just like this. I probably am. That's what this will do to you. This bike parking business. Stood there talking to a tree, yeah. It was definitely apparent that a little bit of craziness was starting to set in at this point. And the next thing I knew, I was chasing down an ice cream man. Come on, he's up ahead. If I can catch him. Fuck. Come on, slow down. Please, I want an ice cream. Oh no, he's turning the wrong way. Holy shit, there's an alpha mart. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Oh my god, yes. Ice cream man, doesn't matter. Oh my god. I just need energy. I wouldn't be buying this otherwise. It's just calories, isn't it? I don't even like it. Ugh, horrible. I think it's time for me to carry on starting to get some weird looks from the staff. Overstay my welcome, probably, probably scaring away potential customers. Don't blame them. Like a frenzied summer wasp, Alpha Mart had been the answer to all of my sugary prayers. By my calculations, that's now two breakfasts, a bag of Haribo and two ice creams in me. Surely this would be enough fuel to get me to Kuta. <laughs> Being chased. Ah! <laughs> no! <laughs> They're just gonna chase me all the way to Kuta. Ah! <laughs> yes. Can't catch me, boys. For the next few hours, I had to navigate around the giant Awang Bay, and the heat was relentless. The only thing that they could grow out here was tobacco. Tons of it, actually. It's a vital lifeline for the locals whose livelihoods depend on the industry. I found myself wondering why else would anyone be living out here? I don't want to be, I'm not trying to be rude when I say this. I don't mean it in a bad way. We, we really are just kind of like in the, the back end of Lombok. And I don't mean that offensively. I just mean like there's not a lot here. It's quite nice in some ways. You're kind of just rolling along through these farmers' crops and little villages. Not a lot going on and it's, yeah, quite like it. In the backwaters of Lombok, where life is a little slower, you're always bound to strike off conversation with someone, or many in some cases. <laughs> the attractive is quite a crowd. <laughs> this, happens, this happens every time I pull over. Okay, makasi, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> 
panas sekali. Uh. Ya. Saya bersepeda ke Kuta ya. Oke, okay, sampai jumpa lagi. <laughs> I must look ridiculous to them. Alrighty. Bye. <laughs> oh man. They must be having a laugh at me. I would if I was them. It's the most bizarre sight of the day or the week. I haven't necessarily filmed every interaction I've had on this trip, but let me tell you that. That happens pretty much every time I stop. <laughs> you sit down, get in the shade, and somebody will wander over and have a little chat with you. It's lovely. So friendly. They just uh, want to know what am I doing? <laughs> Probably thinking, with the state of him, I've got to go ask. What are you doing? And then I tell them and they're like, oh yeah, he really is cooked in the head. Cooked in the head was a, yeah, that's a fair assessment. <laughs> mile by mile, I slowly reeled in my destination. I was making my way around the bay and then trundling over all these bridges and pushing up huge hills. These are the hard miles now. These are the ones where you find out what you're made of and have to dig really deep. What a brutal, brutal day. By the mid-afternoon, I was, I was cooked just about everywhere. What I'm made of right now is Picari sweat and Jammy Dodgers. It's all that's keeping me going. Sweaty and overheating, I basically just resorted to stripping down as much as legally possible. I make no apologies for what you're watching. Let me express myself. It's a free, free world. Don't care what you think. Unsubscribe if you want. I could blur it out, we could compromise, I'll blur it out. But I just need to free the nipple right now. <laughs> yes, I know, sorry. Quite a sight. It, it turns out that not everyone is happy to see you in these small villages. What? <laughs> Go away. <laughs> nah. For fuck's sake. Set the whole village off now. Oh my god. Uh, that's it. Just alert the whole village to this naked man cycling through. Sorry, naked man. Who can blame them, right? I, uh, I looked like a right state. I was glistening by this point. I wasn't actually sure how much I had left in the tank, to be honest. Just as I was starting to feel like I was running out of steam, I arrived at a familiar waypoint. Oh my god, yes. This is it. The roundabout at Mandalika. Turn left. We'll go chill at Maresi Hills for a bit, watch the sunset. Yeah, why not? I've earned it. The Maresi Hills stick out into the ocean overlooking Kuta. It's the perfect place to end the day. I just had to navigate through some sort of festival first. What is going on? Mate, I'm so confused. This is classic Indonesia. I mean, every day in this country, there's a festival happening somewhere and this one was no different. I think I might have lost the plot. What is going on? Is it my... They all come to see me, finish over the finish line. Yes, I'm the champion. It's me, the winner. Up here, I, I did kind of feel like a champion. <sighs> come on. Did it. Yes. Made it. I'm not 
knackered, but I made it. My body is... Yeah, that was the hardest... I don't know if it's the hardest day, but it feels like they're all adding up on top of each other. Look at this. I've got a scuff from when my knee hit the tyre when I was trying to slow down. Bleeding there, I don't know what that's from. Chain scar there the other day. Chain's just gone in there. Um, big blister on my hand there. Won't even talk about my arse. But I feel like I've... I feel like I've broken the back of this now. Two thirds of the way. Two big days left and I, I can do that. I think I can do that. I haven't really thought about the finish yet. Just been taking it day by day. But if I can just push out two big days and there, I'm back home. <sighs> Nursing some horrendous but frankly unsurprising sunburn in my hostel for the night. That's a terrible, terrible image, sorry. All focus turned to tomorrow. <sighs> Tomorrow's a big, big day. Uh, tomorrow's gonna be hell. Uh, it's a long, long way. It's about 84 kilometers across what we call the tail of Lombok, all the way to a place called Banco Banco, which is at the other end, the western, southwest point of Lombok. <sighs> it's best not to think about it, really. But I'm gonna try and prep everything and then go super early because I think the only chance of me making it there is if I if I leave like 6 a.m. and I think it's gonna take me 12 hours. <laughs> Next time early starts. Oh man I'm so tired. Horrendous hills. Come on Josh. Big deep. And one of the best roads I've ever seen. Woo! I'm flying. In the final episode of the Lombok tour everything I've learned is put to the test as I attempt to make it back home. Let's get back home. Let's do this. I forgot to say goodnight and sign out on this one. So sorry about that. It's probably a pretty good indicator of how tired I was. Um, but I did have time for my third ice cream of the day though. So, you know, priorities. <laughs> I'll catch you next time for the final episode. Ooh.